Okay, uh, you know, before we, we hop into the questions, guys, um, just want to say up front how excited we are for this week. Uh, get the chance to add a lot of young players to the roster uh, for the 2020 season and beyond. Um, want to actually uh, make special mention to a couple groups that we have internally. First, our college scouts. This week is really the culmination of really a 15 month process. And these guys, they make a ton of sacrifices, you know, living out of hotel rooms, spending a lot of time away from their families, their loved ones. Um, throw on top of that a general manager change mid process, um, as well as a global pandemic. And, and these guys have um, you know, responded to every challenge at every, at every turn. They've done outstanding work uh, over the course of the spring. And they really serve as the foundation that uh, allows us to be prepared to go uh, this upcoming week. Uh, also want to just mention, um, you know, our research and strategy group, which has done a, a really nice job of, um, you know, working with our scouts and coaches, you know, as we build this board collaboratively, they've done, um, you know, a fantastic job with their work. And then also, you know, last but certainly not least, our coaching staff getting their input um, on a lot of the draft eligible players, their fit within our offensive defensive systems. I've been really, really pleased about how our group at large um, has come together over the past several weeks, and, and we're really excited for uh, this upcoming weekend. So with that, we'll open it up for, uh, for questions. Go ahead, Tony. Next. Tony, we'll start with you. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, uh, the news over the weekend that Makai Becton had a flag test at the Combine, have you spoken to him about it, and has your opinion of him as a potential draft pick changed at all? Yeah, Tony, I'm, I'm not going to get into the habit of like comment on a specific prospect here, but I, you know, suffice it to say that, you know, we'll take all information um, into consideration when making a player decision, but I'm not going to talk about any specifics for, for individual guys, at least, um, at least this morning. Sorry. Thank you, Tony. Next question. Tom Withers. All right, Tom, take it away. Andrew, thanks very much for doing this. You look well. Hope everybody in the family is doing well. Um, before we get too deep into the draft, I know everybody's got questions about that. I'm just curious as to what's going on today in terms of the, the virtual offseason opening up. Can you give us a sense of maybe what Kevin is trying to accomplish today or what you guys can do? Now, I'll let Kevin speak on that more specifically, you know, the next time he's with you all. But I, I, I can assure you that Kevin and the staff, they've done really a remarkable job given the circumstances, uh, making sure that our guys, you know, have what they need uh, during kind of this un unprecedented period during the spring. Uh, and I have full confidence with Kevin, our coordinators, our position coaches, um, that they have the, the, the plan and the resources to make sure that our guys are prepared and can hit the ground running, um, you know, whenever we do get back into the building. I know you have no real, I mean, you can only guess at this point as to what those first nine picks are going to go like before you. Um, is it your preference, Andrew, to use that 10th pick? I think we talked about this last time, or, I mean, are there, are there really compelling scenarios then to move back based on other needs and the fact that you can maybe get a veteran tackle to fill that spot up front? No, it's, it's, it's a good question. I guess I'd answer that in, in two ways. You know, number one, you're right. Something that you alluded to earlier, you never know how the first, you know, nine picks are going to fall. And so there are a number of different scenarios that could mean that we would sit and pick, move up, move back, you know, do, you know, do whatever. And then the second piece of that is, um, you know, we're, we're not going to be pigeonholed into a certain, you know, certain decision, certain mode of operation. Um, you know, we're going to make the best decision that, 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 you know, we think is, is right for the roster and won't be, won't be pigeonholed into anything specific. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Tom. And uh, Jeff Shadell, we're coming to you next. Uh, Jeff, we're having trouble hearing your audio. You're currently unmuted. All right, Jeff, we're going to come back to you in just a second. We'll, uh, we'll line up Mary Kay. Mary Kay, you're ready to go? Yep. Hey, Andrew, how would you characterize the interest in that number 10 pick? We're seeing a lot of you know, chatter about teams wanting to trade up, trade back. Uh, in, in your experience with drafts, 
would you say that there is you know considerable interest in number 10 uh, more so maybe than than in other years or, or how's that going no, that's it, that's a good question mary Kay. i would characterize it as um you know i don't know that it's any more or less unusual than 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 previous years and you know quite honestly you never really know till you get a little bit closer to the draft and then certainly on the on the clock um, just because there are a number of different scenarios that that can play out, I do think that you know we will you know we'll have options. You typically do you know every year in the draft, almost regardless of where you're picking. Um, but I think it's it's probably too early to say you know what what things would look like on Thursday night. All right, thanks, Mary Kay. Nate, you're now up. Hey, Andrew. Um, I wanted to ask you about. Um, I know you're not commenting specifically on Becton, but because of the setup this year, mm -hmm. when you don't get to have a guy into the facility, um, you're able to do the video calls, but you're not able, you know, you're just not able to, to have as much access. Um, I understand that you guys in uh, 2017, uh, you were part of a draft where you guys did take a guy with a, a flag drug test in the first round at Jabril Peppers. But this year, with the restricted uh, access and limited opportunities with players, does that complicate this uh, issue for you guys? It's, it's, it's another good question, Nate. Uh, I don't think it really compl complicates, uh, you know, matters that much for, for really any prospect from a, from a background perspective. And the reason is, you know, a lot of the work that we do is with, um, you know, individuals who have spent, the last three, four years, um, you know, with these guys on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, in terms of the, the spring scouting process, not necessarily being able to have guys on site, we are very fortunate, um, again, to, you know, live in the, you know, live in the age of, of technology where we have, you know, Zoom, FaceTime, you know, things along those nature. We, we were able to sit with, um, you know, most if not all of these guys uh, at the combine. So I, I think there have been enough touch points where we get a really good sense of um, who these guys are as individuals. And we're very fortunate just with all the, you know, the video capabilities today where you can get a lot of, um, you know, maybe not quite a hundred percent of the value, but a lot of, a lot, a lot of similar value that you would have with, with guys on site. So I, I think we'll be well prepared there. And, and, and I think we'll have good information on all the prospects. All right. Thanks, Nate. Scott, you're good to go. Hey, Andrew, um, we've been spending so much time talking about left tackles. Um, have you spent the most time on left tackles in your draft preparation? And, you know, how much do you rely on Bill Callahan? And is there a guy in your scouting department is like the offensive line expert? Uh, good, good question, Scott. So, uh, you know, our approach with the drafts um, has really been to, to scout and evaluate as if you have an expansion roster. Um, and that's that's really the case every year. We don't really go into a fall or a spring and say, hey, look, we're just going to hone in on these specific positions, you know, because, again, the, the, the draft is more about maximizing uh, the amount of talent, the long term talent on your team, as opposed to as opposed to filling needs. Um, you know, very few rookies come in and hit the ground running and, and you know, play at a, a Pro Bowl caliber level their first year. And so I just think that's the, I think that's the wrong focus. Uh, in terms of your question regarding um, our coaching staff, you know, our coaching staff's input across positions is always going to be valued. And, and it's something I even, you know, mentioned at the onset, like that's going to be a part of how we build our board. So, uh, you know, we take our, our position coaches, our coordinators, Kevin's input, you know, very seriously in terms of uh, what the final board looks like. And, and, you know, that'll always continue to be the case. All right, Jeff, let's give it another shot real quick. Can we hear you, Jeff? Still having trouble there, Jeff. We'll, uh, we'll work that out hopefully soon. Okay, we're going go to go uh, to Daryl. You're up. Hey, Andrew. Um, I'm, I'm curious with all the focus on left tackles, if you could maybe touch on the defensive side of the ball. Um, there seems to be a lot of needs over there. And just your overall impressions of what is available uh, to you? I, I know you mentioned draft first need and, and talent first need, et cetera, but just defensively, um, 
you know, do you see that this potentially could be a, a defensive heavy draft for you guys? Uh, the first part of your question, I think there are a lot of good good football players across you know the offense and, and defensive side of the ball in this draft. It's not it's not um, heavy on one side versus the other. There's there's a lot of talent uh, within this class. I'll really echo the sentiments I mentioned earlier. I, I really, I really don't anticipate us being pigeonholed into any specific direction, um, any specific side of the ball. Again, we're going to go into it more with the approach of maximizing the overall talent that we can add to the roster, as opposed to going. All right, thank you, Daryl. Next, we'll go to Jake Trotter. Yeah. Hey, hey, Andrew. Um, could, how do you evaluate the the strength of the offensive tackle position in this draft, especially at the top uh, of the draft relative to the other ones that, that you've evaluated before? Hey, Jake, another good question. I, you know, I'm, I think you guys probably know from the spring, like I, I think there are a lot of good football players in this draft. I'm not gonna talk specifically about any um, specific position, but look, there, there, are, there are a lot of good football players, O-line skill, D-line, secondary linebackers. I, I think we'll have a lot of options for us throughout the next, throughout the, uh, the three days, so. Great. Uh, Tony, we're coming back to you. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, uh, I understand there'll be a, a, a dry run uh, by the league today. And I also read that each team has been assigned a name to submit as part of this. Could you tell us? who you've been assigned to submit in your mock draft? Honestly, I wouldn't mind telling you, but I, I can't, I actually can't remember who it is. I'll have to actually pull up the, uh, pull up the PDF after this call, uh, but I can't remember who it is off the top of my head. Sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, Tom, we're coming to you. Yeah, Andrew, that's kind of where I wanted to go as well. I'm just curious with all the we're all talking about the various machinations that are going to occur during this very unique draft. What, what, um, not concerns you now, but what, what do you think can be troublesome at when you're on the clock and, and some of the other things that could pop up? Tom, I actually really do think it's going to be smooth when we're on the clock. We actually had our first, or probably our second, you know, little run through this morning. We'll have the leagues on Monday. We'll have another simulation, actually multiple simulations on Tuesday. So we're, we're going to feel very comfortable. Well, we do feel very comfortable. We'll feel even more comfortable, um, you know, as we head into Wednesday morning. I think, honestly, the biggest challenge is, is just more ironing out communication uh, because outside of using video conferencing, a lot of the, the technology is very similar to what you would do if you were, your, if you were on site in your facility in your typical um, draft room. So I, I don't think that will be as big of an adjustment, um, but just making sure that we have the appropriate backup plans in case you know, there's an internet issue, a power issue, and then also, you know, just no different than we're seeing on this call, making sure that people know when to mute and unmute, know people <laughs> are with each other, you know, things of that nature, which um, I think will work through just fine. All right. Thank you, Tom. Now, Scott Petrick, you're up. Andrew, I mean, it's your first draft in charge. So I'm wondering, you know, is it a nervous time at all? Do you feel the pressure? How different for you is, how different is it for you being in this new role? I actually don't think it's it's too much different, Scott. I, I mean, obviously it is different with, you know, having, you know, the the decision-making authority, but it's really really more excitement. I, I, I have a ton of confidence in our group and what we've done um, over the course of the spring. So I do feel very prepared and it's, it's exciting because we've spent so much time on these prospects and it's a little bit like Christmas come early because it's like, okay, now we get to see who, the newest members of the Browns organization are going to be. And that's a, that's a really fulfilling and rewarding um, time, well, not just for myself, but everybody else who has put countless hours into this process. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Jeff, one, one more try. Let's give it a shot here. Un unfortunately, that looks like uh, strike three and we're out. Fortunately, we, we do have a question from the audience from Jeff Shadell. Uh, Jeff is asking, uh, he's trying to get a picture of what draft night will look like, Andrew, for you and the team. How many people will be hooked up into the communication system between scouts, coaches, personnel, and other groups? Uh, roughly about 12, 12 or 13 people across some of the, across some of the different groups. We'll have uh, you know, a couple of 
side channels for our broader group. I think, you know, I think Paul had mentioned this, maybe uh, he might've mentioned this last week. I think one of the bigger disappointments to the current setup is not being able to share um, the experience, at least physically with, with everybody in the organization. Um, it's, there's something special about being in one place together as, uh, you know, as all the picks roll off, but uh, we're going to do our best to make sure that, uh, you know, we can replicate that as much as possible. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Nate, you're up next. I had a non-draft uh, team question. Um, we, when we talked to Paul D. Podesta the other day, he was very strong in, in shooting down the Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, Minnesota trade talk report. Uh, but just wondering, as a follow-up, have you or you know Kevin or anybody in the organization talked to Odell and you know just tried to assure him that you know that indeed was. Uh, totally false, uh, as Paul said, and that, that he's part of the plans. Have, have you guys had any communication with him along those lines? You know, Nate, we, we, we communicate pretty consistently with with all of our players. And the probably the last thing I'll say on this Odell piece is, I think just as an organization, we've, we've really have addressed this you know, several times at this point. Um, so I, I really don't think any more really needs to be said about it. Excellent. Got, Thanks, Nate. We're we got time for two more. So we're going to do Steve and then we're going to do Mary Kay and then we're out. All right. So Steve, you're up. All right, Andrew. Um, in terms of uh, a number of players who are rated pretty high, maybe being bunched together, uh, uh, you aren't talking about specific positions. I'm thinking about uh, tackle. A bunch of guys are rated uh, as like top 20 prospects or close. How hard is it to sift through whether it's that position or another position and really know in your mind and be comfortable with uh, thinking that, uh, yep, this is, uh, this is the correct ranking? Or how, how often do you find yourself going back and uh, looking at the list and saying, oh, yeah, this guy got uh, draft, drafted fourth among the guys at that position, but he wound up being the best guy? So let me, let me make sure. I just in, let, me, let me make sure I paraphrase so I'm answering your your question uh, accurately. Is it more just what's the difficulty of sorting through to call it the top twenty or so players on a given draft board? Is that is that more what you're getting at, Steve? Am I understanding? No, just uh, just one. I'm, I'm again. I'm thinking about uh, tackles this year. A bunch of them are are in, to use that word bunched together. How hard is it to sift through it and? Uh, and satisfy yourself that you're making the correct ranking on guys who are bunched kind of closely together. You know, it, it can be challenging at times, depending on the year, depending on the position. Um, but, you know, that's fortunately why we have such a, you know, such a long process and we get a lot a variety of inputs, and, um, perspectives, you know, on any player that, that we're doing work on in the draft at this point, um, you know, all of those distinctions are, are, are pretty clear uh, because there has been a ton of hours, hours put into it from, um, you know, all the different groups that I mentioned at the onset of the call. So, you know, at, at this point, we really have, feel like have a, a, a pretty clear mind, um, you know, across all of the positions. Uh, but it, it definitely, it definitely takes some time. And that's, that's why we work through the entire process. All right, thanks, Steve. And for our last one, we'll go to uh, Mary Kay. Hey, Andrew, how likely is it that you will acquire a veteran in a trade during draft weekend or perhaps trade away a veteran uh, during draft weekend? And how hard have you been working on uh, maybe the parameters of some of those possible trades? Um, I guess I would, I would, in terms of likeliness, would, would, would probably never know until it till we're close to the draft, but um, you know, we'll explore any avenue that can um, improve the roster. I know I've, I've said that a couple of times and some of you are probably tired of me tired of saying that, but it truly is, it truly is the approach. Anything that we think can help improve the team, we're going to be um, active exploring and um, you know, we'll certainly listen, but you know, I can't say anything, anything's imminent.